Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. Now, one of the most requested recipes that I've had come my way from a few people, and one of my favorite dishes of all time, is a bolognese. Now, or bolognese? Bolognese. God, sometimes I just cannot pronounce things properly. It's very strange. I don't know what it is. It, it's just this accent that I was plagued with, I suppose. A bolognese. So, what is a bolognese? It's a pasta sauce that is basically just full of meat and has a little bit of carrot, some celery, and some onion in there. And it's basically simmered in like a wine. And I like to use some red and a little bit of white. You'll see for yourself. And that brings out an incredible, incredible flavor in the meat. And some recipes require that it takes hours and hours of simmering the meat inside of the wine. But guys, we're not doing that here. Because the magic of pressure cooking is going to speed that along for us. And give us really, frankly, the exact same flavor result in my opinion. And I'm a guy who loves Italian food, so... I won't say that lightly. And then we add some crushed tomatoes, and then we make this unbelievably delicious meat-based tomato sauce. It's like the be-all, end-all of meat sauces of bolognese. And I like to do a little finishing touch to give mine a little bit of a smooth ending, and you'll see for yourself in the video what I do. So pop in the Big Lebowski and put a bowling ball in your hands, because guys, we are bowling a strike for bolognese. We'll begin with a large Spanish onion, and dice it up into pieces about this big. Now let's take a nice, large carrot that even Bugs Bunny would be envious of. And then peel them and then dice them up into pieces about this size. Not too big, but kind of about this size, you see here? And then just add them to the onions, alright? Moving on. Grab yourself a stalk of celery. Take two stalks from that celery. And then finally chop those two stalks up into pieces like this, and then add it to the carrots and the onions. And as for the rest of the celery, you see all these little leafy tops here in the stalk? Rip those off and save those, because we're going to add those a little bit later. And if you have extra celery, I don't know, just dip it in some peanut butter or feed it to a squirrel or, or your dog or something, I don't know. Or stick it in one of your in-laws' mouths if they talk too much. Now let's go to the Instant Pot and add in a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. So now let's come down to the control panel and hit the saute function and make sure we're on the more or the high setting. And after about three minutes of the oil heating up in the pot, we're going to add in our carrots, celery, and onion. And we're going to stir this around in the pot and we're going to let this cook for about five minutes in the oil. Make sure all the veggies are nice and coated and then stir and set in that time. And after about five minutes of all of our veggies sauteing in the olive oil, they're going to become a little bit translucent, at least the onions will anyway. And they'll lightly soften up, not too much, but don't worry about that, they're going to get there. So let's add in one tablespoon of crushed garlic and then stir that in with everything else in the pot for another minute. So now let's add in our meat. I am going to be using one and a half pounds, and I'm choosing to use a veal, ground beef, and ground pork mixture. All three are ground, uh, but you can use whatever you want. You can use just a pound and a half of ground beef, you can use a pound and a half of ground pork, or just veal, whatever. But I like using all three of these. Whatever you choose, go with a pound and a half. And now let's break that up and mix it around in the pot with all the veggies. And we want to just lightly brown our meat. And this is the most important process of making a bolognese, is making sure that we really saute the meat for a decent amount of time before we actually pressure cook everything at the end. So we'll do this for about another five minutes until the meat becomes relatively broken up into crumbles and begins to lightly brown. And it's also going to release plenty of juices, which we want for this. Just make sure you mix all the meat up with all the veggies. And you'll see that as the meat's cooking, it begins to simmer and liquid's going to begin to form, again, because that's going to be all being released from the meat. And after stirring our meat up a bit and tossing it around in the pot to get even distribution, you're going to see it's going to start to look like this. Nice and crumbled, kind of browned, light browned, but not fully cooked at all. That's exactly how we want it to be. Now we're going to add in our next ingredient, and that's going to be a red wine. I'm adding three quarters of a cup of a dry red wine, like a Pinot Noir or like a Cabernet Sauvignon, as well as a quarter of a cup of a dry white wine, like a Chardonnay. Now just mix the wine up with all the meat, and we're going to allow this to simmer with each other in the pot for 10 minutes. Yup, you heard that right, guys. 10 minutes we're going to saute this, and then we're going to be in our final stages before we pressure cook. And the reason why we're doing this, like I said, is because a bolognese is all about the meat sautéing really in the wine, and it's key to give it that right flavor. Now, if you don't drink wine, well, you can just use some broth. We're going to be adding broth as well at the very end, but um, I would suggest, if you could, to use wine. As you see, it's bubbling right now, and all the alcohol will burn off. So let's allow all of our meat and our veggies to simmer in the wine for 10 minutes. And look at how beautiful everything 
everything's bubbling in the meantime. It's going to be perfect as it does this on its own. Don't even stir it up. It's going to work itself out nicely. And that's why we also don't drain the juices from the meat. It's important that it actually infuses with the wine and everything else going on in the pot to give it that extra flavor. And after 10 minutes of our meat and our veggies simmering in the wine, we're now going to add in some crushed tomatoes. And guys, I recommend if you can using San Marzano. It's the best kind, but if not, any 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes will be great. Let's add that to the pot, along with two cups of beef broth, okay? And because this is clearly is not a vegetarian dish, I'm going to say don't even bother subbing anything else with the beef broth. I mean, if you don't want to use wine, you can just use uh, extra beef broth to saute the meat in and everything, but honestly, go for it in my opinion. And by the way, you can only saute in 30 minute maximum increments, you see, it won't go above 30, and that goes really for all models. So if time does run out for whatever reason and you go over 30 minutes with sauteing everything in the pot between, you know, making sure that the meat is all sauteed in the wine and the vegetables, all that stuff, then just hit the saute button again and then it'll just saute again. No worries there. But again, you probably won't even have to do that. And lastly, just before adding our pasta, let's season this up. I'm going to start by adding one teaspoon of seasoned salt one teaspoon of kosher salt, because this is so kosher, a teaspoon of oregano, and a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Let's also add in those leafy tops from the celery stems that we used. And now let's stir all that up in the pot together. And our final step is going to be to add our pasta. And for this, guys, I am going to be using ziti rigate, which is basically ziti with ridges or like a mini rigatoni. I think it's perfect for this. I'm using a whole box, which is like a pound of pasta. And I'm gonna add that in. And now I'm not going to stir my pasta in, I'm simply going to press down on it so it's submerged in everything in the pot and all the liquid. It's okay if some of it peaks above, but I don't want to stir this in with everything else. It'll make it a little difficult to come to pressure if you do that. So let's just make sure we just kind of smooth it out, make sure it's nice and submerged just under the broth. Take a few moments to do this properly so it basically looks just like this when all said and done. Okay, we're ready to put our lid on and pressure cook now. Let's secure our lid. Make sure we're in sealing position. Now let's come down to the control panel again and hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button and then hit the pressure cook or manual button. And we want to go on this guys for six minutes at high pressure. And by the way, if you have a dual plus series and it says this normal, less or more, ignore that. Always make sure the top one's on normal if you have that, but leave it on high pressure. Six minutes, high pressure. And again, if you're on a dual plus, leave it on normal. It's time to do a quick release and the pin just dropped. So let's take our lid off, and there's our pasta. Now let's give everything a good stir in the pot. The pasta is cooked to perfection, and look at how perfect the sauce is. It's a beautiful bolognese, but guys, guess what? We're not officially finished yet, because I like my bolognese a little bit creamy, with a touch of some cream, or some cream cheesiness to it. I'm not super conventional, but sometimes bolognese sauces do have a creamy factor. And besides, when you hear a naze at the end, it sounds like creamy, like Bernays sauce, or Hollandaise. It's got cream in it, you know? So I'm gonna add a touch of some cream. I'm gonna put a quarter of a cup of heavy cream, or half and half, and mix that around in the pot with everything. It adds a really nice element to it. One's a full. All right, and one more final touch. And if you know me by now, you know my love for this stuff here, guys. Borsin, any flavor will do. I'm using Shaolin Chai because that's what I have. In Costco, you can get them in three packs for a great price. You can get them in your supermarket in like the fancy deli cheese meat section, all right? 5.2 ounces, or you can use a five ounce portion of a brick of cream cheese, or you can leave it out completely. You don't have to add it, but I like, like I said, a little bit of creaminess to this, and I love the way this flavors things up. So let's add it to the pot. Cut it into cubes, and I cut it into chunks so it melds more easily. It disperses that way a little bit better. Oh, and this is going to be the perfect bolognese, in my opinion anyway, because I like it with some cream in there. And look at this, guys. The star of the show is going to be the meat in a bolognese, and we're going to make sure that it always has a spotlight here, which it will, because the flavors have come together like nothing else, and truly, this is my favorite bolognese ever. So now, let's take some and let's serve it up. Alright, there we go. Put some in a bowl. So much good stuff going on in here, guys. And there we have it, guys. Some delicious, unbelievable pasta bolognese done right in your Instant Pot. And now if we want to, we can top this off with some Parmesan. And really, why wouldn't you top it off with some Parmesan, right? Why not? And this baby is ready to serve. Let's dig in, oh boy, and try it out. Here we go. And there it is. All right, cannot wait. Let's do this up right. Look at how beautiful this is. I always say that, don't I? It's true, it's true. 
prepare ye. This is one of the most bodacious bolognese's I've ever binged on. Oh my god, it's really good. I know you think I'm over the top a lot of you when I do these things, but I'm telling you, it's all genuine. Truly, it is. I love food. To me, it's better than sex a lot of the time. Richard, do you want to try this? And in my opinion, of course, you definitely want to sprinkle some extra cheese on top because why not, you know? It goes with it beautifully. Mmm, bolognese, bolognese, bolognese. Eh, oh, look who's come. Mm. Whenever there's food, this guy's will follow, believe me. Uh, what do you think? Try it out. It looks really good. It looks meaty. That's a bolognese for you. Mmm. Mm. that good? Yeah. Can you taste like, like, you know, the wine flavor in the meat? It gives it a really yeah, rich it flavor. Together, it's very rich, yeah. Good. So those who are afraid of, like, getting wasted off of eating it, don't worry about it. You'll be okay. I don't think your kids will end up under the table if you feed them this. Can I have this? <laughs> you you want to take the whole bowl for, away from me? Just like that? I mean, I have a whole pot worth. That's fine. By the way, this will definitely feed, like, four to six people easily. One box of pasta might not look like a lot, but once you cook it, it expands, and there's a lot going on in that pot. Look. Look, I'm showing you right now. This is everything that's left in the pot. Look at that. Ow, I don't want to hurt myself. So, sure. so what do you think? Uh, you may have to go into Italy with each other and having amazing bolognese sauces and everything. How does did this we rank? have a bolognese? We did. But how does this rank amongst them? He doesn't even remember. There's so many different things. You go to Italy, it all becomes a blur. Yeah, it does. So, but how does this rank? If you were to go to be in Italy and have a pasta, would this be something that you feel like would be worthy of such a pasta in Italy? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Good. Thank you, my darling, wonderful test taster. And there he goes to finish the entire <laughs> I can't stop eating it. Yeah. Mm. And all the vegetables have cooked down to the perfect consistency. If you like a super rich, deep meat flavored pasta, guys, bolognese is for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy all these recipes and these videos, go to PressureLoveCooking.com because I have tons of recipes there. You can search for anything. Use a little magnifying glass in the upper right corner, choose a category, see what you want. They're all fantastic recipes and easy to follow. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLoveCooking and like that page for any time a new recipe drops for live videos, which I do often, and I sometimes I bring people on camera with me. It's super fun for deals on items. Check that out and definitely like the page. And at PressureLove to subscribe to me on YouTube where all my videos live in an easy to find catalog, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. Guys, thank you so much again for everything. And you know what? If it's Saturday night, make yourself a big bowl of bolognese. Ugh. I can't speak. Bowl of bolognese. Guys, thank you so much for everything. And you know what? Make yourself a nice big bowl of bolognese and then get a big ball and go bowling. Mm. So good. It really is so good.